Peter Dutton, welcome to the program. Morning, David. Now, you said during this campaign that the by-election result would be, and I quote, a verdict on the leaders. No question about that. So, Mr Dutton, what is the verdict on your leadership? Well, I think there were many messages uh, out of last night. Um, obviously, the difficulties for us in Victoria haven't been just, you know, germinated in Aston over the course of the last five weeks. Even back to 2013, with all of my predecessors, Victoria is the one state that we've never held a majority of seats in. And there are huge issues for us at a state level as well. For almost a quarter of a century, uh, it's been a Labor government here in Victoria, bar a couple. So uh, many lessons, including for me and for our party, and uh, we'll take those. We'll listen to and I want to come what to the that. people of Aston have said and we'll, we'll act on it. But you indicated this was more than just the Victorian problem for the Liberal Party. You, you said in your own words this was a test of your leadership. So have you failed that test? Well, we, we didn't win the seat. So uh, by definition, uh, we have a lot of work to do. I accept responsibility and... I'm the leader of the party. I was there last night uh, to do that. I agreed to come on to the show this morning uh, knowing that uh, if you win, lose or draw, you need to front up. And, and we appreciate that. Exactly. No, no, and I'm happy to do that. Have, have, you, passed, have you failed your own test? Well, uh, again, by not winning the election, uh, we, we've failed that test that have been set uh, by us, uh, for us by the Victorian people. That's, that's the reality. Now, the, the question is how we rebuild from here the policies that we have, the brand rebuilding that we need to mm. do in Victoria, and, and that I'll, is a I'll very significant issue for when us. When Malcolm Turnbull uh, said the Longman by-election was a test of his leadership and, and the Liberals went backwards, you challenged him for the leadership. Last night was far worse for the Liberal Party in the Aston by-election. Why should you stay as leader? Well, I didn't challenge him for the leadership. Malcolm resigned as the leader, but uh, that, that's you know ancient history. Uh, I mean, interestingly, you, you bring Malcolm up. I mean, Malcolm, who was small L liberal, uh, good leader of our party, uh, didn't do any good in, in Victoria. Uh, mm. Tony Abbott before him. In fact, we've gone backwards since John Howard's high water mark in '96. So, do we have a lot uh, to rebuild in Victoria? Of course we do, David. And I accept responsibility uh, for us not winning the mm. by election. We but had a should great... you stay as leader? Uh, of course I should. And uh, I can tell you, it makes me more determined to rebuild this party and to be in a winning position by 2025. I've been in a marginal seat for the last 22 years. Uh, I've won it by 217 votes. I've won it by 9% at different elections and high and wa low watermarks. That's, that's the nature of politics. Ours is now an opportunity to rebuild. We will do that over the course of the next couple of years and we will go into the next election in a position uh, that will see us win it. But in terms of your achievements as leader, you said last night that I have had one test for my leadership, whether we can keep the party together. Um, is that really your main goal, keeping the show together? Shouldn't your main goal be trying to reconnect with voters that you're losing? Well, well uh, of course it is, David. But the fact is that after a government goes into opposition, as was the case with the Rudd-Gillard government, uh, as was the case with the Howard government uh, in 2007, uh, parties always tear themselves apart in opposition. It's exactly what Mr Albanese was a part of when Julia Gillard and Kevin Rudd lost the election. So uh, we haven't gone through that period uh, of self-destruction. Is we've that because you have to appease the Nats and Conservatives in your ranks? Not at all. It's because we've been able to uh, hold the show together uh, because I have respect for my colleagues. Uh, I have a leadership style which I believe that they appreciate, which is why people are uh, very strongly expressing their support uh, to me and no doubt uh, to you in, in relation to the mood in the party room at the moment. But w we have a particular problem in Victoria. There's no question about that. And well, we have to let's talk learn those that. lessons and rebuild. So, I mean, last night was historic for a couple of reasons. It's more than 100 years, has been pointed out, uh, since an opposition lost a seat to a government at a federal by-election. But also look at this. You now hold only those two blue seats in all of metropolitan Melbourne. Can you explain why? Well, David, as I said, if you go back to 2013, when we had a landslide victory, Victoria was still held by the Labor Party in terms of the majority number of seats. Uh, it's been going backwards for us since 1996, uh, before I got into the parliament. Uh, no Liberal leader before me uh, has been able to rectify the situation in Victoria at a state level, um, and full credit to Greg Mirabella and the uh, the team, but but the, but you the keep Victorian... going backwards. So I'm just asking why. Well, if, well, this is what we need to assess, and we need to understand. You don't why know. We're, well, we're ten we're ten months into this period of opposition, so the claims that we should have policies out there uh, and announced. I mean, you're you're a professional uh, in this business. No opposition's releasing every policy for uh, the next election. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just asking whether so... you have an understanding as to why 
you've gone backwards well, so our, far. Our, our, bra our brand, our brand uh, has suffered terribly Why? in Victoria. Why? Well, uh, people haven't voted for us at a state level. Uh, and in the last 24 years, 21 of those years, they voted for Labor. So why, of us. why is that? You well, must that, have that, some idea. Well, that, that's what we need to what we need to assess. You don't know. Uh, I, I I think we need to uh, do the analysis of Aston, have an understanding of uh, what people were motivated by, uh, what caused them to vote Labor uh, for the first time. I mean, for both this is major a problem, parties. Though, if you don't, if you're unable to put your finger on why the Liberals are in such trouble in Victoria. Well, David, uh, I, I mean, Labor spent the last five weeks throwing mud at us, at uh, Rashina Campbell, at me, uh, at the Liberal, at the Liberal brand. Well, I mean, they, they are effective campaigners. And Daniel Andrews uh, is, is ruthless uh, at a state level. He demonstrated that at the most recent election. So I think there are issues in relation to policy, to personnel, uh, issues uh, in relation to our campaigning techniques. All, all of those, obviously, so, are the lessons So the why is that Labor's better at campaigning. I mean, your, your Liberal MPs will be troubled by what's happened last night, understandably. They'd, they'd be looking to see a leader say, I know what's going on. Well, David, I think there are obvious issues that, uh, that we need to address within the division here in Victoria. Uh, that's a statement of the obvious and that has been going on for a long time. Uh, I, I intend to do everything that I can from a federal level to be able to uh, to rectify that. Well, let, when okay, you well let's talk about that. One of the big issues uh, over the recent weeks in Victoria and elsewhere has been this issue of transgender rights. Mm. Peter Dutton, where do you stand on this? Well, I don't discriminate against anyone, Dave, and I won't tolerate people discriminating against people on the basis of their religion, of their sex, uh, their gender, uh, their skin colour, anything. Should and Liberal think, MPs go to an anti-trans rally? And I, uh, Well, let, 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 let me finish. And, and I think I've demonstrated that over uh, my period of time in public life. Uh, I think people should have uh, respect and I think also um, the debate runs two ways. There, there are very strong views uh, within many parts of Australian society, maybe not right here in the inner city you know, um, areas of, uh, of our country, but in the outer metropolitan areas. This is an issue in terms of, of women's rights and the gender issue uh, that, that has parents and others very worked up. So would you have a be... problem with one of your MPs going to an anti-trans rally? I, I, I don't believe that uh, our... MPs should be going to, uh, to anti-anything rallies, to be honest, uh, apart from anti-Labor Party uh, rallies, because uh, they're ultimately what does wrong by our country. If you look at the debt uh, that the government's in at the moment, if you look at the spending policies, you look at the inflation that's feeding into higher interest rates. Okay. Uh, by the end of this don't, term... Don't go to these anti trans rallies. End of this your, term, your point I, there? By the end of this term, I think the, uh, the Prime Minister is going to, you know, all of the... Uh, you know, the joy that he's expressing at the moment, um, I think it's going to be a very different dynamic. Well, we'll see. More broadly, election. beyond that issue, can I ask you, what does the Peter Dutton-led Liberal Party stand for? Well, we stand for uh, aspiration. Uh, we stand for entrepreneurialism, so small businesses. Uh, we stand for national security, obviously. Um, and we always stand for cleaning up a Labor mess when we get back into government so that people... So uh, it's much, make the same their own things, much the same things as, as the Scott Morrison-led Liberal Party and, and well, others. Well, it, it goes back to the traditions of Menzies. And uh, I grew up in the Liberal Party under John Howard. I was Assistant Treasurer to Peter Costello. Uh, we, we make decisions that allow people, uh, for example, to keep more of their own money so that mm. they can support their own family. Uh, and th there is, you know, a lot that we can put uh, together in way, by way of policy before the next election, but we're not announcing all of that mm. at the 10 But is there a need for philosophical renewal, given where you're at? Well, again, David, I think some of the, uh, the attributes of the Liberal Party uh, frankly are timeless and worth us re-prosecuting. I think in recent years uh, the Liberal Party has allowed itself to be defined by our opponents, and I think it's time for us to take that back, uh, to stand up for what we believe in, whether it's uh, trendy or not, uh, and some of that, um, I believe, is uh, what the Australian public demand, particularly in our seats in outer metro areas and regional areas, and that's what we're going to do. It deliver. doesn't sound like this morning you're signalling any shift, any change, any new direction. Well, if you're asking me about the, the fundamentals of our party, uh, they're, they're not going to change. Uh, we have a proven track record when we're in government. Uh, we've just come off the back of a 10-year period uh, federally, and if you look at the two parties, the Liberal Party has been much more successful uh, in the modern era than Labor at a federal level. At a state level, it's a different story, uh, particularly in Victoria, mm -hmm. and that's something that we need to assess. Okay, but any change on policy? Well, of, if we've got if we've got this? new policies to take to the election, David, we'll do it in, in good in good time. We're not rushing out with policies at the 10-month mark that people 
will have no recollection of by the, the three-year mark. All so right. well, uh, uh, another there's issue. always a timing in this business, mm. and now is not the right time to be out there um, putting out costed policies and changes to taxation policy or social policy otherwise. That, mm -hmm. That'll come in due course. Let me ask you about a, an issue that's also important to um, uh, voters, not, not just in Melbourne, climate change. Mm. Do you accept that uh, what the scientists are saying, the world's already warmed by 1.1 degrees and is likely to breach the one and a half degree tipping point in the next decade? Well, David, uh, we, we have been uh, the worst salespeople uh, in terms of what we've done for the environment. The, the claims made by the Prime Minister today about the amount of solar, uh, the amount of uh, uh, hydro, uh, the battery investment in our country, all happened under a Liberal government. The problem is that we never prosecuted the argument. We were never successful in getting out there telling people what we had done. So we need to have renewables in the system to address climate change, we need to be able to firm them up. And this is where this debate's going to twist but I was, I was over the next couple of years. asking about the extent of the problem. Do you accept what the IPCC have said? Have I'm, you looked I'm, at their I'm, recent I'm report? I'm happy to accept it, but we, we need to be realistic about what we can do as a country. And driving businesses and industries offshore is only going to increase emissions into the global environment and it's going to lose Australian jobs and economic productivity. So the cement industry is one such industry that I think is at real risk of leaving our shores. Now, well, we're not what, going to stop what, using why you, cement. Why do you say that? Because, you know, we've heard well, because from... we've spoken very clearly with the industry and... and they're leaving, that, that they? are they? Clear... They've told you they're going to go. They have very grave concerns about the future of their sector. Uh, there are issues around steel. Uh, we have... Uh, this... Because the, the Chief Executive of Manufacturing Australia says the way the safeguards mechanism changes have been designed uh, means they won't have to pass on significant increases for steel, cement, aluminium, bricks. Are they telling you something different? Well, David, if, if you've got a company that has cost imposed on them, they're either going to take a cut to their bottom line, that is that they're going to reduce their profit, or they're going to pass those costs on to consumers. Now, I think there are a lot of consumers out there at the moment who are trying to build a new house or renovate their existing house who understand that the cost of that building, the materials, the labour is through the roof. It's just not what and, they're saying publicly. Well, I, I, can, I can tell you uh, what we've spoken, where we've spoken to people, uh, it causes us grave they're concern. They're telling you something different, are they? Uh, I, I think there are a lot of business leaders, frankly, in the country at the moment who are saying things differently in private than what they're saying Why? publicly. Why? Uh, because I think they're worried about social media. Um, you guys all, you know, you're So they're to, lying to the public. I, I mean, David, you will race to Twitter after this interview after insiders to see what your supporters have to say. I can and guarantee you I won't. Really? Well, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm pleased to hear it. But there are a lot of people who do, including in the corporate sector. And uh, I think it's time for a lot of those leaders to stand up because the, the, the fears of a gas disruption this winter or next summer are real. We need to be able to firm up renewables and we don't have the ability to do that. So will you repeal these changes to the safeguards well, mechanism? We'll, we'll make our policies uh, in, uh, public in, in real time. Well, you, uh, why in, are you hesitant on that? Because you've already said you'd repeal a fairly modest tax increase for big superannuation accounts. Why can't you say the same about the well, safeguards David, changes? when we make a decision on our policy, we'll announce it. That's, that's the point. Uh, and we, we go through a process uh, to cost it properly, that's the that's responsible way. So this might stay that's in place. How, that's how we do... Well, we, we haven't yet made a decision about what our policies will be at the next election, okay. so when we're closer to the campaign. Um, but they, they will be about trying to reduce, not increase prices, mm. and they will be about trying to increase stability, not allow labour to disrupt supply, because if you get these businesses who have capital that can be deployed here or deployed mm. to Peru or somewhere else, if they decide not to do it here, it means Australian jobs go. And if we're making the input cost too high, which Labor is doing at the moment with energy, not just households, but businesses as well who suffer and ultimately take a decision to leave Australia. A final issue, uh, another big one this week, the Indigenous Voice. Um, the opposition's been raising all sorts of questions during the week about whether the Voice would be advising the Reserve Bank or the Defence Force. Look. With an eight-year life expectancy gap, worsening rates of Indigenous incarceration and, and suicide, do you really think The Voice is going to want to spend its time telling the Reserve Bank what it should be doing? Well, Megan Davis uh, has pointed this out yesterday, that uh, all of these areas will be within scope, David. I think every Australian starts with the desire to help Australia, help Australians of an Indigenous heritage, particularly those kids. And if yeah, you within, at, within scope... Well, let, let me with, finish this, because yeah. I think it's a really important point. I mean, I think when you look at what happens in... Alice Springs now, mm. when we've gone up there, and I was up there only a few months ago, the women up there are screaming out for support. They have a voice now and it's not being listened to. So do I think that the voice is the panacea or that it's going to create uh, change for those people? Well, the Prime Minister 
needs to explain that because instinctively anybody would support that. But that, that has not been what the Prime Minister has been able to The point is there are these real problems for The Voice to get on with. Isn't it a bit alarmist, a bit ridiculous even, to, to say, oh, it's going to be you know, um, gumming up the works of the Reserve Bank or the Defence Force? Well, David, this is the biggest change proposed to the Australian Constitution since Federation. Mm -hmm. And the Prime Minister can't answer the basic questions in relation to how it will apply, how it will work. And you can't out-legislate constitutional change. So mm -hmm. if you're going to change the Constitution, you need to be assured that it's going to be for the best. It's not going to be another layer of bureaucracy, that the voice will actually reflect the views of people on the ground so that you can would get you, the sort of would, outcomes would you back you're it, talking would about. Would you back it if the words executive government were taken out? Well, the, the government's been clear that they... Uh, and In fact, they've gone against the Solicitor General's advice on this issue. That they are That's going not to what keep, they say, well, to be clear. Well, to our viewers, is, they've said the Solicitor General supports where, where they've landed. The, the, the Solicitor General and the Attorney General went into the committee with advice to take out executive government, they were overruled. They deny that, they Mr. Dutton. They deny that, Mr. Dutton. Well, I just need to be, you know, straight with our viewers. They've denied that. That's what happened, David. Um, How so, do you know? Well, I, I, I have a, a better understanding, I suspect, than. Were you in the uh, room? No, but I have a very clear understanding. I think some of your panelists and others have written on this uh, with multiple sources out of the room. Uh, and it has been the advice right. to the government consistently. If you but open, regardless, if, you if they took up, that wording out, you still may not back it, right? Well, we'll have a look at uh, the wording, but the government's been clear that they're not going to take it out, and mm. that is a deal-breaker for them, and the Prime Minister has sided with the committee over the advice of the Solicitor so when General. So will, when will you make a call on well, this? Well, in, in, in due course, and, and our party room will meet, uh, to have uh, a discussion about what is a very substantial change. You and, wouldn't stop the referendum going ahead, though, would you? Well, David, we'll, we'll meet as a party room, uh, and we'll have a look at... Uh, uh, the options on the mm. table for us. We want Australians to have a say. We supported the mechanism, mm. uh, and uh, as you point out, uh, I think in your earlier package, uh, that went through the Senate with the support of the coalition. Mm. We work with the government to facilitate mm. that. Uh, we've had a genuine approach, but we've uh, we've got questions that are legitimately being asked, and if the Prime Minister can't answer them, uh, then Australians, mm. if they have a hesitation, won't support it in the absence of an understanding of what they're voting for. But you wouldn't vote against the referendum going ahead, surely? Well, David, we're happy for the people to have a say. I mean, we've okay. been very clear about that. Uh, mm. But uh, And we don't hold a majority in the lower house uh, nor in the upper house. So uh, we'll work with the government. We've been, uh, we've demonstrated that uh, mm. despite all the rhetoric that comes out uh, from the Prime Minister. There are many bills where we've supported the government. We'll continue to do that. But uh, where you're talking about constitutional change, you need to make sure that it is going to deliver the benefits, particularly to Indigenous Australians, that, that the government's foreshadowed. Peter Dutton, we'll have to leave it there. I do appreciate you fronting up this morning. Pleasure. Thank Thanks, David. Thank All you. Right.